بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بين استعين على امر الدنيا ودين صلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين ان شاء الله before we start ان شاء الله just uh, announcement next week we're not going to have any lesson on Tuesday and Wednesday because this Eid ان شاء الله so we're not going to have any lesson on Tuesday and Wednesday ان شاء الله maybe the following and week ان شاء الله just to know that ان شاء الله باذن الله as for today ان شاء الله uh, the sahabi that will be will be discussing about his life and his biography is suhaib ibn sinan ar-rumi suhaib ibn sinan ar-rumi suhaib is an arab originally but in he end up in 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 in, in the western countries in rome the byzantine empire in his time Though, so his, his, his story begins, Suhaib's father, Suhaib ibn Rumi, the Sahabi, great Sahabi Prophet Sallallahu his father, Ibn Sinan, Sinan, was a governor in, from the Persian Empire. So he was representing the Persian Empire, and he was the governor of one of the cities, and now in Iraq. At that time, it was under the Persia, they are the ones who are controlling the Kisra. So he was the governor of that city, his father. So he's from, from that family, <coughs> originally. And uh, while he, the father was the governor of there, what happens was some of the soldiers of the Roman Empire raided the city because the Romans and the Persians were enemies. They used to fight each other. They were enemies, sole enemies. And they were the superpower at that time, you know, the superpower, the, the most uh, powerful countries at that time were the the, the Romans and the Persians, the superpower. So these soldiers, they come into the city, then they raised the city, and they captured Suhaib and his mother as, as a prisoners. They killed the soldiers, a small city, and then they took them with themselves, deep, deep into Roman Empire. And this was Iraq in that time, so they took them into Roman Empire, whatever there was. And then what they did, they sold them as a slave. The mother and the son, son Suhaib and Rumi, was just five years old. Him and his mother were separated later. Each were sold separately as a slave. So Suhaib and Rumi, may Allah bless with him, ended up in this, the market of slavery, slaves in Roma. And he went on and on, you know, and serving his masters one to another and on and on life. It's just like uh, Salman and Pharisee. So whenever you, 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 you try to study the story of the Sahab and one Allah alayhim there, they are really something so important in our life, so have difficult in their life. So he then end up in, in, in Rome, he start serving his masters as a slave, as a slave. And then at the end, the historians, they have got two narrations and they say maybe he, he left Rome, you know, he got an opportunity and he ran away from Rome and he came to Mecca. Others say he was some of the uh, Arab businessmen went into Rome and they they, they, they bought him from there, and that is the, the correct narration. So some of the wealth Arabs from Mecca, they went into Rome because they used to do business with them. And they used to go and sell and buy slaves. You know, slaves who are, they were so important in their life. They used to work for them. They used to, you know, bring them tax and all these things. So they, they bought him from there, Suhaib and Rumi, and then they brought him into Mecca. By that time, the Prophet ﷺ, the, 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 the da'wah of the Prophet ﷺ was not there, you know, before that. And then they sold him to a man who's called Abdullah ibn Jid'an. Abdullah ibn Jid'an is one of the wealthiest, you know, businessmen in Mecca. He is known and he was very generous, really. And he used to feed the poor people, he used to give food. And he, someone who was very known in the community, Abdullah ibn Jid'an. He was, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't become a Muslim, but he was known for his wealth. So Suhaib ibn Rumi is, was uh, sold, by, was bought by, by Abdullah ibn Jid'an. He's working for Abdullah. He freed him. He made, he made him free, but he was training him as a businessman. He trained him as a businessman. He was taking care of his business, and he got talent and he got experience from the business of Abdullah ibn Jad'an for quite a while, you know, for some years. And then at the end, he established his own business. So he became really a very successful businessman by himself, whether he has shops and, you know, gold and all. He was known. But the thing here is Abdullah ibn Jad'an and uh, uh, Suhaib ibn Rumi didn't belong to Quraysh clan. So if you are that time in, in, in Mecca, you should be belonging to the Quraysh or you should have 
a, a protection from other tribes, a kind of island, you need a protection. As long as you do not belong to Quraysh, you know, people can harm and hurt you easily like that. Because there's no one who's going to protect you. You understand? There's no, because you are, you are from the minority. You're a minority, just like we are today, minority, you know. So like that, you have to go and have, you know, uh, get a guidance-ship guidance from someone else. So Abdullah ibn Jad'an was his, and after a while Abdullah ibn Jad'an passed away. So Suhaib ibn Rumi established his business by himself. He was running his shops and everything, people know him. And then as it was that way, he had the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the message of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The message, message of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this was something well known in Mecca by that time that people were, it was the talk of the day really, or the talk of the month or the talk of the year. But something new was coming in. Some of the people before that knew that there is a new messenger that will be coming. That was the Jews, the Christians, and some of the Arabs. People were waiting for a person who will be coming, a messenger from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Jews were waiting, but they were thinking that they were, they will, it will be from them. The Christians, the same. So all the people were waiting for this man, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because it was in the scriptures of the Judaism and Christianity, all of them, that there will be a man from, from Mecca, from Medina, and everybody were expecting that. So when they had the message, and uh, people were accepting Islam, and Suhaib ibn Rumi radiallahu anhu was one of them to look for the information, to look for, the, for that, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he went to look for Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who was in Darul Arqam. In the house of Darul Arqam, because Darul Arqam is where the, the Sahaba used to meet, you know, that's where he used to meet before and, you know, discuss about the issues and all these things. So while he was going on there to the Darul Arqam, he met there Ammar ibn Yasir. Ammar ibn Yasir is also one of the slaves who are in Mecca. Ammar ibn Yasir, radiallahu an. They met in the door, each one and everyone wants to go into the house, they don't really know each other. I don't really know why everyone is there, but they met in there coincidentally. So they asked, you know, why are you here? You know? So they went to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at the same time they came to know, and then they took their shahada on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It was a very difficult time, especially for a person who is not from Quraysh clan, and especially for someone who was a former slave. It was a very difficult time to declare his Islam. It was a very difficult time. And Amar and Khubayb and, you know, uh, Suhaib and Salman, all these were groups from original slaves who were freed. So the Qurayshis, they were treating, treat, treating them, they were not treating them, them well. So they used to tell the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we will not come and sit with you and we will not take you any information from you as long as these slaves are with you. As long as these slaves are with you, we're not going to come to you. They used to tell Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. Uh, told the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam not to listen to them. Anyway, Suhaib ibn Rumi accepted Islam and he takes Al Islam and then the trials begins and the test begins and you know, and he has his business there and all that and you know, the da'wah at that time was, was down secretly, you know, people were accepting Al Islam secretly. People are coming to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they're giving allegiance to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will tell them, okay, you know, uh, wait for, you know, the time when everything is, is apparent. Anyway, Suhaib ibn Rumi radiallahu anhu was there. He was a very big, a very big, uh, successful businessman. He had shops and everything. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to go and make hijra to Medina. And everyone prepares himself to go to Medina. And every Muslim who has got a tiny iman in belief of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everyone prepared themselves to go to al Medina. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Hashr. لِلْفُقَرَاءِ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ الَّذِينَ أُخْرِجُوا مِنْ دِيَارِهِمْ وَأَمَالِهِمْ يَبْتَغُونَ فَضْلًا مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرِضْوَانًا وَيَنْصُرُونَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولَ أُولَئِكَ وَمُسْتَادِقُونَ So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded the Sahaba, every person who believes, especially men, that they have to go to Medina, make hijrah to Medina, the hijrah was compulsory. It was wajib. So the Sahaba, they didn't have any choice except to make hijrah and leave everything behind. Their property, their houses. Everything they built, their business, everything. The only thing that you can, you can, you can go with you is, you know, uh, anything that is, uh, you, you, any, anything you can carry with your hands. So the Sahaba mainly they left. Suhaib ibn Rumi, with one Allah alim, he was left behind. He said, I was the only one who was left behind because they knew Suhaib ibn Rumi was very busy, very, very business, uh, successful businessman, and he had a lot of money. 
and gold. So they wanted to take, they guarded him all the night. They wouldn't allow him to go, day and night, he was guarded. Now so even Ruby wants to leave, even he doesn't, doesn't want about this wealth. The most important thing in his life is Al-Iman. And this is something which we need to learn about Ya Ikhwan. The Sahaba Ridwanullahi Alayhim, they sacrificed their lives. Today as a Muslims, we are only told to pray, to come to the masjid, just to pray and perform a prayers. The Sahaba Ridwanullahi Alayhim, they were told to leave their properties, their families. Some of them, they left their wives when they did not accept Al Islam. Some of them, they leave their, 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 their kids. And that was a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to see their hearts. And that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ula'ika sadiquna, those are the ones who speak about the truth, about the iman Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. So these are the people who have given their life, their family, their blood, and everything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today, we are living in this country, especially in Luton today, if we are now, someone announced today and says tomorrow everyone has to live. I think very, very few of us will live. There's no one who's going to live, really. Okay? If someone comes to us and tomorrow says, you Muslims, you have to leave this country tomorrow, and you don't have any other time. I don't think there's no one who's going to, you know, come up and live, really. We don't have that iman, because our iman is not so strong. See? But the Sahaba Prophet ﷺ says, every Muslim has to go to Hijrah and make Hijrah to Medina. So everyone prepares themselves. There's no government. You have to sponsor yourself. Yeah, you have to sponsor yourself. Alhamdulillah, today, many of us today, some of the governments are taking care of our life. But remember them, they have to sponsor themselves. You have to go there by yourself. And the way from Mecca to Medina is 500, 600 kilometers. There, there's no planes, there's no uh, you know, trains, and there's no cars, nothing. Either you walk or you have uh, you know, horse, uh, bike, something. It takes time. So it takes a man to go there with that very harsh, difficult uh, environment, really. And it's really, if, you, if someone has gone to Mecca, you really see the environment, really. And you will come to remember and say, how on earth were these people walking on this? Only walking, even today, after 1,400 years ago, you, can, you cannot even stay there for one hour without water. With so advanced technology today, even, even in Mecca today, in outskirts of Mecca, if you go out from the city of Mecca, outskirts of Mecca, you cannot even survive one hour. And people are walking there for 1,000 kilometers, 600 kilometers, 700 kilometers. How is that possible? It is possible because of the Iman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. So Suhaib and Rubin Allah Ali makes hijrah, it makes intention, and they make him, they don't allow him. And then he leaves in the night, in the middle of the night, and leaves everything for them. Not a penny, even one penny, he didn't take them. He left everything. He listed his gold, his ship, his, his, his shop, and everything. A business that he was, you know, building up for years and years and years and years. And he leaves in the dark of the night. Only himself with his soul. To obey Allah and the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he goes, walks, and walks, and walks, and walks. And then he, he goes to Medina. By the time he meets the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he sees the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, says, Rabbi halbay'u ya aba yahya. Rabbi halbay'u. Your business is successful. This is a wahi before... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Jibreel to tell Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Suhaib ibn Rumi on his way and he left his properties and everything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Rabbi hal bay'u ya abaya, your business with Allah is successful. Inna Allah ishtara minal mu'minina anfusahum wa amwalahum bi anna lahum al jannah. Allah has, has bought the believers, their souls, and their property in trade, traded with Jannah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Inna Allah ashtara minal mu'minina anfusnam wa mu'alam bi anna lahum al jannah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. So when he came, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was smiling and he was telling me, uh, the, the business you do with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was complete, successful. The transaction was complete. Allah has, Allah has told you the business was, 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 was successful. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, wa min al nasi. Among the people, the believers, are those who are selling their souls to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're selling themselves to Allah with the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the people today in this world, we're living, they're looking at the stock, stock market. You know, whether it's going up and down, 
what is the business good and down. The other people are looking at the stock market of Akhira. They're looking at the stock market of Akhira. Which product is going up, which product is coming down. They're looking at that stock market. This is the difference. As Ali Ridwanullah said, in in the dunya qad aqbalat, in the dunya qad adbarat, wa in the akhirata qad aqbalat. The dunya is ending and the akhirah is coming. And each one has got its sense. It is people. Be the, the sense of akhirah. Do not be the sense of the dunya. Today, this, this amal, actions, there's no accountability. Tomorrow, there's accountability without actions. Ali ibn Abdullah Allah Ali said. So that's what I'm saying that people there, when they're doing business, the people they're doing business Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The others were doing business Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When they're looking in this market, the others were looking in the market of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And always the business of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be successful. So why in Rulul Allah Ali stayed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and after that, uh, after a few years he died. Inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with him, inshallah. Wa jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.